Yes, we're looking back at 25 years of music programs and retracing the steps of an international craze known as La Salsa. Saludos a Miguel Perez. When Images Imágenes began 25 years ago, many of the shows featured a studio audience, and this gave us a good reading on the kind of programs our community enjoys. For example, here are a few of the folkloric music groups that have appeared on Images Imágenes. <laughs> While the folkloric music groups always generated a lot of excitement, it was the pulsating, pulsating rhythms of La Salsa, performed by big Latin music bands that captured the most audience response. Here are some of the outstanding or orchestras that have appeared on Images Imágenes. <laughs> question, some of the best Latin music bands in history have appeared on Images Imágenes, but why is there a worldwide craze with Latin music? To answer that question and many others, we have three guests in the studio and one on the telephone. Reinaldo Jorge is one of the most respected and admired trombone players in Latin music history. Alfredo Alvarado is the founder and publisher of New York uh, Latino Magazine, considered the Bible of Latin music. And Chico Alvarez is a radio DJ, band leader, and commentator on the world of Latin music. And on the telephone from North Bergen is Latin music legend band leader Johnny Pacheco. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure have it's a real pleasure having all of you here and and I'd just like to uh, first of all make sure Johnny's on the phone do you hear me Johnny yes I hear you clearly it's a real pleasure having you on, on the program as well sir uh, why is such uh, th there's such a craze all over the world with Latin music let's just start with that that's the question that started the program you're the magazine it's, publisher it's tell me. At me Miguel um, well I think the obvious the obvious reason is the danceability you know people have always loved to dance and certainly when you're when you're dancing with, in Latin music there's two couples they're touching each other so it's the, the sensu sensuality involved 
and they're dancing to some great music. So that's that's nothing new that that people are enjoying um, the dance. I think that what's happening now is that because of the technology and the communication, um, you know, the world is getting smaller, so to speak. And um, we have Mr. Johnny Pacheco on on the, the telephone, and I'm sure he could tell you about the the importance of the Fanny All Stars and going around the world and helping to internationalize. Uh, the music. Johnny, that sounds like a good question for you. You've seen this with your own eyes, the reception you get all over the world when you travel, right? Yes, well, the, dance, the danceability, as you said, is one of the most important things. But to me, I think this music will wake up the dead. <laughs> the rhythm alone is the most exciting music in the world. But when you travel all over the world, in the beginning, when salsa was just growing in the 70s, I guess, uh, did you, were you yourself impressed to see all over the world that you know, when you go to Japan and Japanese people are dancing salsa and listening to salsa music? Was that surprising to you? Well, at the beginning, there was uh, there were horrible dancing. Yeah. But now everything has improved as we uh, as time goes on. That the dancing is getting better and uh, we're getting more fans. There are more people attending the concerts. And they're also buying more records. Thank God for that. Yeah. Reynaldo, you've seen the same thing, right? Traveling with the Fanny All Stars. Tell me what uh, the experience is, the reception you get from people all over the world. Uh, it's it's great. It's it, it, uh, to see all people from different cultures and different countries that really uh, admire you for what you do and for you your playing and and for the music. Mm -hmm. Chico, how do you feel about this uh, popularity of salsa? I think it's great. I think it helps the, the music. It helps musicians to get more work. It helps them to travel. Uh, musicians today get to see places they never get to, uh, got to see, uh, let's say, 25, 30 years ago. Is there a lot more musicians, too, because there's a lot more bands? There's a lot more musicians, but there's also a lot more musicians from other countries, other cultures, embracing the music and beginning to play it and play it properly. Uh, well, we just saw La, 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 La Luz, right? La Orquesta de La Luz from Japan. Many years ago, there, was a, there were bands in, in England, in, in uh, Finland, in all, all parts of Europe that played what they call a bland type of Latin music, which is almost flavorless, insipid. Uh, Pacheco can tell you about that. He traveled uh, even before the Fania days. He traveled to Europe. He traveled to Africa. And he could tell you that uh, they were just beginning to wet their feet back then yeah, uh, in right. terms of, of, of how to... To, to execute the music properly. And after 25, 30 years, now we have Europeans playing just as good as Latinos and, and Africans playing uh, music that it wouldn't come naturally to them since Africa is one of the roots of the music. But in the, in the very early days, the Africans even themselves were stumbling on the music and, and uh, via uh, all these wonderful tapes and movies and recordings that traveled around the world, they have started to play now more, uh, I don't know if, if the word proper is, uh, properly is the right word, but you know, more technically correct, but it was in, in clave, and, and now in, in Alfredo mentioned the dancers too, the dancers, uh, uh, they're, they're the backbone of the whole thing. This is essentially dance music, but there's also uh, the, the, the part of the musicianship. You can sit there for an hour and, and watch musicians perform and watch them getting off on their instruments, really taking uh, solos, 15-minute uh, solos on piano, on trumpet, and just groove on the music without having to, to move your feet. Well, that's because there's true instrumentation. I mean, you guys don't use computers uh, like some bands do in a studio, and then when they go it's out and perform music. live, yeah. they can't do it. They, they can't reproduce well, what they did in the studio because they're using computers in the studio. You guys play the real thing. Johnny, go ahead. I just came back from Paris, and one of the things that flabbergasted me was that when we were playing, they were singing coro. Now they're singing coro with the band, which to me is amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful sign, because they're not only uh, enjoying the music, but they, they get, they're getting involved with it. Mm -hmm. And Johnny, you know, there's groups in, in Finland, too, that are, that are playing like real typico song. It, but they're, they're singing in their language, in Finnish. They're singing in German. Definitely. They're singing in French. Wow. And, and they're, 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 they're doing the soneo in their language. It's really strange to listen to, but they have the feeling for it. Okay. But the percussions are playing incredibly well. Yeah. But it's because people like yourselves I insisted on the roots of Latin music when you came in, 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 in 20, 20, 30 years ago, when you guys pioneered. Uh, came into the Latin music scene, brought salsa to where it is right now. You say that there were all these blends of Latin music traveling around the world that weren't re the real thing. You guys insisted on the real they thing. They weren't authentic. You know, when I started, 
A lot of musicians couldn't read music. They didn't have the foggiest notion as to what, you know, uh, how to build on, on a, an arrangement. Uh, they really didn't know. And thanks to uh, teachers like Reynaldo here and many others who have gone to the school system and showed young kids how to read music, uh, how to solfeo, uh, and, and, you know, theory and arranging. And they, they've come now to the point where, you know, they're, they're ready to compete on a world on a world stage with anybody musically. Mm. Whereas 25, 30 years ago, musicians were very much self-taught. They played by ear a lot, and, and a lot of them didn't know what they were playing. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really know the roots of it, the clave. And the teachers, we have to thank the teachers for that. You know, the teachers that got into the school system. There's someone who's still teaching, right? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and also, it, it helps a lot when you have, uh, when you can see, it's not the same to listen to records. But when you can see uh, the actual performers, sure. you learn more quickly and you grasp, you know, the concept more readily. Mm -hmm. You know, as a matter of fact... Uh, it's not only dancing, but you're going to a concert. Mm -hmm. You're watching mm -hmm. the band as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, like at one point, I remember in, in, in the late 70s and 80s, there were, mus there were musicians coming from Europe to study here, Latin music. Mm -hmm. And they were, as they were also going to Cuba to study rhythms and whatnot. So they, they, they took the time to come in and learn. And How do you guys feel they about... They did their homework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you guys feel about the term salsa? Uh, there's a lot of talk about you know, where it came from, what, what it means. Uh, uh, what, what's your take on it in your magazine? Well, I, you know, I, w I'm, I was in New York City when that term started to, to sprout. And uh, even though people usually say, well, it, it was a marketing term, um, you know, to think that uh, Jerry Masucci sat down and, and they had a marketing meeting to figure out a, a name for the, for the word, I think it's... I'm not sure if that, that's what happened. I think it just happened naturally in the street. It happened because the young people of that generation, in the, especially in the Puerto Rican community, were people that were coming of age. Um, and there was not also only the music that was happening, but there were also other creative things that were happening. The New Yorkian Poets Cafe, all those poets were starting to publish their first books. And you would go to concerts, and they, you'd have poets like Pedro Pietri, Sandra Maria, Sandra Maria Estevez. You'd have comedians like Rick Aviles and uh, Conjunto Libre, Tipica 73, all on the same bill. So you had music, You're you had comedy. You're making me very nostalgic. You had literature. Yeah, well, so it was, a, it was a blending. Um, but as, and naturally, you know, the Cuban music was definitely there. But I look at somebody like Willie Colon, and for me, Willie Colon epitomizes what salsa was about, because for me, it was bringing in a lot of different stuff, bringing in Puerto Rican music from the countryside, Aguinaldo, bringing in uh, coastal music, Bomba and Plena, bringing in Cuban music, bringing in Brazilian music. Yeah, well, there you was know. something else also that, may I say something? Sure, go right Danny, ahead. go ahead. There was something else that uh, when we started the Family All-Stars, we had like uh, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Cubans. We had one Englishman, which was uh, Barry Rogers. We had a Jew, which is, uh, so we had like all different condiments. And when you make a salsa, you have all different condiments condiments and that's one of the reasons we call it salsa but we've been playing cuban music it all came from cuba mm -hmm. so it was a very diverse mixture of people and that's what uh, where the, thing, uh, the term salsa came from yeah mm -hmm. and the other thing is we will uh we cover all latin music or all tropical music under one roof in order not to uh confuse the public because we were traveling all over europe mm -hmm. but we never said that it wasn't cuban well, I think what well, Maestro Pacheco is saying, actually, that they took the, the, the base was Cuban and it built up from there and added as we, as we went along. Yeah, yeah. We after, a, after three decades, there's so much in there now. Uh, you know, it's just like a, a conglomeration of all different types of music and cultures that have gone into the sauce. I have no problem with the word. Uh, as long as everybody knows it's Cuban music, it's sauce. It's a commercial term. It's like jazz. It is. Jazz, but, but jazz. The word jazz came out the same way. Regardless of how commercially it may be, it is the word that filled the Madison Square Garden with major concerts. It was kind of like a that. rallying cry. Yeah. You know, it was a rallying cry. And during that, during the '70s, when that term was used a lot, there was another magazine called Latin New York, which was published by Izzy Sanabria. So right. he kind of held on to the word. So at that point, it, it really kind of helped galvanize. And you know, being in in television, you kind of need these little catchphrases sure. in order to explain stuff. Sure. And like Johnny Pacheco was saying, you know, to go around the world and breaking down all the different rhythms, they just kind of threw it under, under one pot. And you mentioned Jerry Masucci. How instrumental was he to developing this Latin music industry that we have today? Well, he had uh, he died in a lot of, he had, last a, year. he had a, all the great artists on, on that label. Um, people like uh, Willie Colon, Hector Laveau, Rune Blades, Ray Barreto. 
And, and together with uh, Ralph Mercado, they took all those guys around the world and helped internationalize the music. So uh, undoubtedly, well, he was an important well, person. Well, one of the things is I was a partner, and Mr. Pacheco of, I was a partner of Finding Records, and one of the things that I wanted to do was like, have it as a family, which, thank God, we, uh, we accomplished. But uh, one of the things that helped us a lot was when we uh, did the Cheetah, the first concert with the Finding All Stars, uh, Jerry had the vision of uh, filming this. And that helped all the groups uh, advance in, uh, in quite a bit. Mm. But yeah. the idea of filming the concert that was was incredible. There was uh, something called Our Latin Our Thing. Latin thing. That was the concert, that, right? That, 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 was, that movie played mm -hmm. at uh, at a theater on Seventh Avenue. I saw it when I was like eighteen or nineteen. Fifty uh, Second Street, Seventh Avenue the theater is still there. And uh, like Johnny said, uh, Jerry was visionary enough to understand that it would be a good idea to film uh, that movie. And I think that's one of like the most definitive. Uh, movies on Latin music that we have. Wow, history being made. Um, Johnny, you, you go way back, you've played with a lot of uh, different uh, musicians. Do you think the music is progressing? Are we making progress? Are we taking it to new dimensions? Uh, definitely, because uh, the, new, uh, the, the young generation, they're adding new stuff that, would, that we didn't have it before. Because of, uh, they were born here, like some of the guys that grew up here, we uh, we have the influence of jazz and uh, other kind of rhythms, mm -hmm. and we've been injecting that into the salsa. Oh. So I think it's, uh, the, the arrangements are getting uh, more interesting. But there's also some new, uh, new young blood coming in and displacing some of your old timers, right? Right. <laughs> Is, that's happening too, right? Well, Tell me about that. That's, bound to happen. that's a, a part of the process. Yeah. Of life itself. Yeah, yeah but like, I now know myself with like a bottle of wine. The, the older we get, the better we get. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, I want to mention the, the article that you, the interview you had in, uh, where was it, Descarga magazine. Yes. An excellent interview, and I got information that uh, was very helpful to me. You, you really elucidated uh, a lot about the early times when you were young com coming up in the music. It was an excellent article, and I liked it. Very well, much. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It was one of the best interviews I think anyone has ever done with you. Mm -hmm. I, I feel so. I feel like it was a very well done. It was done very well. Johnny, I understand you were also in a new uh, production, uh, Raf Mercado, a new uh, feature a movie, film, uh, about salsa? Yeah, we started to do that like, uh, like a documentary. But uh, I, I, when I saw the finished product, I think it was, a very, uh, it was done very well. It was like a Latin encyclopedia. And, and, and what's happening with that? When is that going to be out? Uh, it, it was out. It was in the theaters. Oh, it was already out. Yeah, the only thing released, is yeah. that it should have been sold as a documentary, not as a movie. Oh, I see. Because right. there was no plot there. I see. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So um, where are we going from here? Where do you see the, this new generation of Latin entertainers coming in, and where are they taking the music? Well, I think things, uh, things have changed considerably. I think uh, you know, Latin music now is a multi-billion dollar industry nowadays you know the uh the profitability factor has increased incredibly so and it's not just salsa it's merengue as well it's merengue it's pop it's tex-mex but i think unlike in the the 60s or 70s nowadays when you make a record for one of these big companies you know you really have to sell a lot of a lot of records or else you won't be around very long you know and that you won't have the opportunity to really work on your craft as opposed to like in the 60s or 70s you know Fania they recorded a couple of records by some individuals that may not have sold a lot but they stuck around and they played a lot nowadays you're kind of in and out real fast and yeah. I think or you can start your own record company or you can or, yeah or the, te or the technology <laughs> like is available the to is, start like, your own record company in those days if you sold like 75,000 that was a big hit Exactly. Nowadays, you got to sell at least a quarter of a million. Yeah, and, and uh, I think that for younger people coming up, there's a lot of pressure to perform really well, really fast. And, and I'm not sure if, if that's a good idea for, you know, developing uh, your art. So I think that, uh, you know, some, some of us that have got the opportunity to see Mike Hibet or Hector Laveau, I think we were very fortunate to see a real polished uh, artist. Mm -hmm. And what is the impact that uh, music videos are having on, on the industry itself? I'm not, I'm not really too sure about the impact. Uh, it, it, it does expose the music to a, a broad audience. We still haven't. We, we still don't have the kind of presence. Uh, Latin videos don't the way like MTV. Uh, you know, we don't have that kind of presence. The, well, the, they don't. For one thing, they don't have the budgets that the uh, American music uh, yeah, that's, labels that's have. They have big budgets. You know, 
They're making them. They're making them better. You know, uh, like We Are Latina is making much better videos. Sony's making uh, better videos. But if you don't have a forum to play the videos, then what's the point of having the videos? So, so, so shouldn't shouldn't be someone like Ralph Macchio be buying a cable station and making it an, a, a Spanish a salsa well, it could, MTV? It could be. It could be anybody. It could be Ralph Macchio. Sure, it could be uh, Johnny <laughs> Pacheco. It could be Reynaldo or uh, yourself. You know. Uh, but yes, but there's a need for that. There's definitely a need for somebody to have a, a, a cable station where Latino music is going to have a strong presence. Und undoubtedly, that would help incredibly, definitely. And it would I think right now the videos are mostly for propaganda, for uh, yeah, exactly. for publicity. Yeah. yeah, they play them in the clubs. They play them at a, a lot of uh, cable shows. Um, I know if you go to Puerto Rico, that's a different market, so you, yeah. you, could, you could turn on the TV and see a lot of the videos mm -hmm. there. But uh, in the metropolitan area of New York, we can definitely use a station for that. And is New York still the capital of salsa? I hear a lot of Puerto Ricans complaining that they go yeah, back to, to Puerto Rico and, and, and everybody there is dancing merengue. They, they, you know, salsa is really the, the home base is New York, right? It's a home base, but it's no longer the capital. I don't believe, I don't believe mm -hmm. it's the capital. There, there are places uh, in, in South America Cali, Colombia, for Cali, example, Colombia is very hot. Where, where they play more salsa uh, on a daily basis than, than we could hear really? here in three hours. Uh, yeah. But uh, one thing I'd like to say is that New that's York... That's just one place. I, I mean, there's many places like that Johnny, around the world. Go ahead. Uh, New York is la cuna de la salsa. Yeah. It was born here. The cradle of salsa. You la cuna. You yeah. can still, you can still, you can still go, you can still be here, though, and, and hear live music every day of the week. You could still go dancing every day of the week here in New York City. I mean, it, I don't think it's as exciting as it used to be. Well, because in New York you're used to them. You see these guys, and they're right next mm -hmm. to you on the stage. If you go, if you go to uh, any other city, they come in. They're in a big concert, and you pay a lot more money to see them. But in New York, we see them every day, and we're sort of like used to them. You yeah. know something? Being that I travel so much, I, I you figure out that when you see the people going to concerts, that the people in New York City are spoiled. Because we have all the bands here, you know. I've, you I've noticed I've noticed something that's quite different now than than, than the way it used to be. Is the the bands that we used to have years ago drew a lot of people. Now the visiting orchestras from other countries are the ones that draw the big crowds, and the local bands don't seem to draw hardly any any crowds at all. Mm -hmm. well, it's like Johnny was saying. I think that people, you know, we're kind of used to it. New Yorkers are jaded, so you have to have something with a little more pop. And that's where I think, you know, Jerry Masucci and uh, Ralph Mercado, they, they were visionary in, you know, in cooking up some schemes, so to speak, to get people interested. Because you've got to get people into the clubs, you've got to get the people to buy the CDs. Um, so I think that for the future, what we're going to need to have is, uh, we're going to have to have like virtuosos in marketing, the same way we have virtuosos, you know, <laughs> in, 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 uh, on the musical level. Mm -hmm. Miguel, if I may, you know, a, a few minutes ago you mentioned, you asked the question about the progress. Are we progressing? Are we going... Uh, I think we're always progressing. We, we've been progressing for 200 years. We progress, uh, the seeds of it, of the music that we call la salsa, come from Africa, they come from Spain. There's flamenco, there was the, the pure African music. It fused together in, in the 15th and 16th, 17th century, even to the 18th century. And then it, 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 it became uh, Caribbean music. It became Afro-Caribbean music, Afro-Hispanic music. It became neo-African, neo Spanish. It fused. There is a, a, a book that uh, Fernando Ortiz wrote where he, he talks about the transculturation process where these two cultures from Spain and Africa, they clashed mm -hmm. and then they joined and they fused and they created a new culture in the Caribbean. And this culture came to New York. So it's always progressing. You, got, you start off with the bolero, you go to the song, you go into the huaracha, you go into the danzón, you go as every generation goes by, it just keeps progressing. And now we've gotten to a point where we come, come I think, to, to a, a, a stale. Well, we, no, we've but gotten stale. This, there's, there's no one really creating anything new right now. Are, are, we, are, are we eventually going to cross over into English language salsa? We did that already. We but tried I know, I know. We, we tried, tried several it times, many, but many is, is it going to really Columbia take off? We tried it with Columbia Records many times. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I wrote a tune called Ella Fue. Hey, and uh, no pasó nada. And Ruben <laughs> Blades tried it even with a movie yeah. called Crossover Dreams, right? Yeah. Yeah. In but which uh, a salsa singer tries to cross over to Latin well, music. Gloria Stefan has music. had great success. Right. That's we right. we should not try to jam or cram our culture and our music and our ways down the throats of other groups. We should let them experience our culture, experience our music, our food, 
and if they either like it or they don't. If they like it, they'll continue listening to it. They'll they'll go out and and they'll 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 help us promote it. Mm -hmm. But if they don't like it, they don't like it. And we just can't expect everyone can't to like it. our thing, our Latin thing. It's ours, and uh, if they like it, fine, and they can be part of the family. Mm -hmm. They can enjoy they can enjoy it just like anyone else. Am I yeah, right, I think the thing mm -hmm. is that as long as people know that it's there for them to enjoy it, like I said before, any, any day of the week in New York City, you can go to a club and hear live music and dance. There's always one night when there's a club that's hot that night. You gotta exactly. know which club so, is hot so what night. So it's there, you know, the, the records are there. You go to Tower Records, they're building record stores that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they have incredibly large Latin music sections. So the information is there for the people to we get. We have to say goodbye, but uh, since Johnny wasn't here, we're gonna sign off by watching him in action. Johnny, thank you for being with us, and we're gonna watch a videotape of you and your band. And as we leave you, we remind you that next week, We'll continue this discussion with a special tribute to three Latin music legends who are no longer with us, Hector Lavo, Charlie Palmieri, and Mario Bausa. Don't miss it. Hasta entonces. Up next, funny lady of folk music, Christine Lavin, the life and work of artist George Siegel, and the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival's new look. It's all next on State of the Arts.